Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Today we're in Greenwood, Indiana. We're at the Greenwood Fire Station, number 93, and we're going to go see what they have. If you guys have been watching our series on using Access as one of the architectural firms, this is another one of their fire stations. This is in Greenwood. They have four different fire stations. This one was built just over a year ago. So let's go meet their chief and uh, one of their firefighters. Hey guys. Hi Chief, how you doing today? Thanks yeah, for inviting us in. Come on in. And you are Dana, correct? Hi, Dana, yes. You're one of the firefighters here yes, today. Yes sir, nice to meet you. Okay, thank Come you for in. inviting us in. Yeah. You guys got a very beautiful house here. So I heard Access is the architectural firms that helped build this house. Mm -hmm. And you guys have been in here for a little over a year or a little under a year? A little under a year. A little under a year. Let's show the viewers what you have here. Let's sure. start right from here. This is the foyer and a watch room. Yep, so we have the watch room here. Uh, we have three computers in here. We all, with us and the EMS crew, we get all reports done, any computer work we might do. And then we just have a few things from the past in here, you know, whether it's our old fire station or just the department or just something that someone's donated to us and we just like to keep it around. And right, every firehouse has got some of that memorabilia, the history that you want to go. Oh, sure. It's a young firehouse, but you're going to get more and more not as the years go along. Right. So. Yeah, exactly. So walking right in here, first of yep. all, it's nice and cool. You know, it was oh, yeah. hot outside when I was, you know, tight tight beginning this, but right here it's nice and cool. So that's nice and not very bright for the public to come in and yeah. see. What do we have over here? Some of our history. Okay. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, these were from the old firehouse and one of the, the helmets up there is from uh, one of our firefighters uh, that passed away uh, in the early 90s. And uh, so we, we carried his helmet over. He was actually a captain of that house at one period of time. So we, we carried his helmet with us. Uh, but yeah, just a little bit of our history and, and uh, a little bit of, of, of where we were and, and to try to add that into the new station. Were you here on this original footprint or were no, you somewhere we weren't, else? No, we weren't. We were about uh, a mile east of here. Okay. Uh, in, a, uh, in a station, essentially it was a, a pole barn okay. station. It was built for volunteers. Uh, and over the years, obviously we started staffing full time and, and it just wasn't built to have somebody in there 24, seven, 365. Right. Right. Uh, so we, we outgrew it. It had some, uh, drainage issues. Uh, okay. so, uh, so there were a couple of times that we were underwater, li literally <laughs> underwater in it. We had a basement. Uh, and so, uh, it was, it was time to, to move on and, and and have a new station. Right. Now, are you guys fully paid? Are you volunteer? Are you combination? How do you guys run here? Yeah, we're combination. Okay. Uh, we have, currently we have 54 full-time firefighters. Okay. And uh, right around 30 part-time firefighters. Okay. And then we have uh, ambulance service that we contract with, which is SEALS Ambulance. Okay. So we have three ambulances. Yeah, SEALS Ambulance in Indiana, make sure I understood this right. I was talking to one of the medics earlier. Yes. Uh, they service all of Indiana, basically, they, they have th their right. big contract. They have so they contracts. can do transports. They can do nine one ones and stuff like that. Right. So uh, it's good to see that collaboration between different services. Many times we get stuck in our own bubble, or we want to take on all of it, and we don't necessarily have to. If right. you have a service that's out there that can help you, it's a great way to do that. Right. So what's else in the house? Let's take a walk. We have the living area of the firehouse right here. Uh, I'll show you the living room first. So we have theater style seating. We just got these new recliners. They have embroidered of our crest on them. That's awesome. That's just give us a little personal touch. Right. right. Um, obviously we've got the TV, a lot of family time in here. Um, just a place to chill out and relax. Right. You have it set up to have more stuff as you grow mm -hmm. to put on the walls and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Oh yeah, for sure. We're all about that. It feels very comfortable in here. It's nice and first of all, cool on a hot day, but you know, with the colors that you pick, the materials that you pick, the recliners, I feel at home just walking in here. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it's just the right size to kind of give you your own space, but you're nice and cozy during family time and you're not too far away from each other. So. Right. I love the brick too. That's that traditional firehouse brick that, you, you know, everybody wants to see. If we go back to the old uh, emergency, you know, the mm -hmm. firehouse brick, that's exactly what it reminds me of. <laughs> Exactly. So you have a large industrial kitchen here. This yep. thing's huge. So it's right next to the living room, which means we can kind of spend time together and not have to spend time on either side of the fire department if you're cooking or hanging out. So we're all right here. And yeah, so this is our big family table. Um, it's great for adding more people around. Right now we have it set up for just as many people as we have here, but 
we can obviously obviously expand. Right. Um, you definitely get your steps in. You have lots of room for storage, uh, all different kinds of cabinets, a big nice stove that we just got. And you're using industrial size appliances and cabinets and, and you know all that kind of stuff. Yep. Is that because you're here 24 seven or? It's, yeah, it's just easier to cook for a large group of guys or a large group of people. Um, your home stove would just take a little bit longer to get through all the people that you need to cook for. So Behind me, you have three different refrigerators. Right. And that's, we've seen this before. This is because you have A, B, and C platoons? Exactly. So A, B, and C shift. And we also have three different sets of cabinets. Um, they're just full of whatever you need. So we each put our own money in, buy our dry goods, store them in each of our individual okay. shift um, cabinets. But then we also have staples. So we have house dues every month. We pay $10 per person per month. And that gets you all the condiments. And we vote on what we want, right? Okay, right. So that can change from house to house. Uh, we obviously have coffee. We love coffee. So that comes out of our house fund too. Right. So the one trend that I'm finding over here in Indiana specifically are these house dues. You know, I've heard it time and time again. Was that something that's difficult for people to understand or did they, they're like, yeah, I can pay $10 a week, a month or whatever it is. I think it's pretty widely accepted. Um, there are times when people may disagree on what exactly that money goes towards. Okay. But then if that comes up, we take a vote. Okay. So there's a vote at a certain time and there's always someone in charge of the house dues, the actual money okay. and the vote list. So it's all kind of organized, but we can at least speak our opinion. Right. Right. And that can go towards other things too. Like if you need a bigger television or, mm -hmm. or if you want a faster internet or something like that, that can all kind of goes in, involved in that. Is that correct? Yeah. So, I mean, um, if we didn't have these recliners, we wanted something specific. I think at the 91s, they have larger couch recliners and they've specifically picked those out and voted on getting those. Okay. So um, not every house has these, this type of furniture. It's all specific to them, but yeah, everyone has a say in what it goes towards. It could Whatever you want. That's pretty cool to have. It, it yeah. creates that, again, family kind of atmosphere. Yeah. So everybody gets to say. Exactly. Yep. All right. Over here, I saw this glass room here. Yeah. Uh, is looks like a huge weight room. Yeah. So this is one of my favorite rooms in the firehouse. This is our fitness room. It's huge. Yeah. So it's a lot more space than we used to have in the old Station 93. Uh, the old Station 93 was a small loft up in the bay okay and we about just got this stuff in there and maybe a little bit of room about as big as these mats and that's all you had okay so uh, this is a very big upgrade and you have a great view you can look out and kind of see what's going on out there right not have to look at a wall yeah so you got your free weights you got your nautilus or your bikes and yep. your treadmills uh, what the other thing that i noticed is you have the glass around it so if you're in here working out and you go down someone can see you yes. you know the family room's right there so you can be in here working out, not bothering them, but for safety reasons, having a window into a uh, workout room is very important, you know? Yeah, we try to stay as fit we can, but accidents happen. Yes, exactly. So, and over to your left here, you have a nice little patio. Yeah, you guys wanna go out and look at it? Yeah, let's take a look at this. All right, and that'll let us back in. So this patio is, again, large, but it's blocked off from the community. Why is that? I think it gives us a little bit of privacy. Chief might have a little more info on that. Full disclosure. Yeah. They built it too high. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually supposed to be about about four feet high, okay. so you could actually see. Okay. Um, and when they started doing it, uh, you know, we were checking out the construction pretty much on a daily basis. And literally, I come in one day and it's about halfway up. I think, oh, they're about done. The next day, they're already laying the final course before the, the top stone. Right. And uh, I'm like, that's uh, too tall. Right. And then we looked at it and we're like, that might be nice. Yeah, it actually turns out pretty nice. It might be nice, it, yeah. You want to be in the community, but there's times where you need to be away from the community. Right. You know, instead of hiding out back or something like that, right. you're here, you're accessible. Right. And you can see people yeah, if they come in see, the driveway. You can see people come in the driveway. It's a nice little area to get out and relax, maybe read a book and just decompress. Yeah. Did you guys buy these chairs or? They were made. They, they were, were made, made. Yeah. yes. Uh, I believe it was the father or father-in-law of one of the firefighters on staff. Okay. And I, that was a house fund. That was purchase. it. Like, yeah. Okay. So there, there's that money. We all voted on uh, Adirondack chairs, and we wanted to support one of our family members that made these. So we just said, here we go. Sure, they're very comfortable. They're and very we have we have station alerting. I don't know, we have on the speakers. outside here too. Yeah, speakers, uh, and then a lot of the at more active rooms. We have the the CAD monitors, so okay. we can actually see. 
which gives us about usually between 30 and 45 second jump on the run yeah. before it comes over on the radio. Right, so right. that's why we decided to put a lot of those CAD monitors in, in the various rooms. Okay, okay. Well, let's keep going around. Sure. On this side of the building, we have the locker rooms. This is the men's locker room. I'll let you kind of take a peek in okay. there. Now, holy cow, this is one large locker room. Of course, you don't need to see the urinals and stuff, but you have plenty of lockers for all of your guys. And I like the fact that it's not, you know, the standard metal locker rooms. It's wood and it looks nice. You know, it looks not like a uh, YMCA. <laughs> it looks like a spa. <laughs> Well, speaking of spa, us women, uh, we kind of took it upon ourselves to make a joke and say ours is the spa. Okay. So uh, when we were oh, first yeah. getting set up in here, uh, we were putting these towels in, and one of us women were standing here, and the men walked by and they said, is this where we schedule the massages because this looks like a spa? Right. So we played it up. We have a little fountain that's not going right now, some candle warmers, some little girly stuff in here. So We're going to have to get you some flowers, maybe some plants to go in there. Yeah, let's make it nice and cozy. All right, and that's right off of the weight room, so you yes. can wash up, get ready, get right on the trucks if you need. Yep, so uh, another thing with the locker room is you can come out this way if you need to, or you can go through the sleeping quarters. So if you wanna see those next. Yeah, let's go, go down that, that way. way. So right here is the sleeping quarters for all firefighters. Okay. And right now we are set up for more than one apparatus. Currently we just have one engine here, so there's three to four of us a night. Right. But someday we could get a ladder or more, so we have more sleeping quarters for more people. Okay. If needed. Yeah, I noticed when we were driving up here, you have a lot of development going on. A lot of new houses that I've already seen across the way, you know, they're excavating and, and moving out land, getting ready for more. Oh, yeah. So you're, it seems like this area is fully expanding. Oh. It is. It's, it's growing by leaps and bounds, it's crazy. Uh, when we initially had this land here and slated for a fire department, we were literally in a cornfield. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see today that uh, there's many houses to the north of us here. There's uh, the development across the street. Once it's complete, we'll have between six and 700 homes. Wow. Uh, so yeah, we- uh, You got it right everybody time. here. Yeah, yeah. And with that, you're going to have the different fires. So you're going to, you know, eventually maybe need a tower or a truck sure. or whatever you call it. Sure. Uh, you're going to need maybe another engine or something like that. And, uh, you know, when they build this building, you know, it, it doesn't look like you're landlocked. It, it looks like you can expand out a little bit. As I was standing out front, you got some room around you to expand. We do. There are 40 acres here that the city owns. Uh, most of it's slated for park development or green space, okay. but the city does own it, so we have that we have the capability of expanding. Okay. How many bunks do you have going through here? Do you know? One, uh, two, there's eight three. total. Eight all together. So, um, male and female, or male and female. I'm the only female female firefighter here right now. Okay. Hopefully, we get more in the future. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's. I know I get that question a lot. Like, do I sleep in the same? But really, when you're sleeping and you the tones go off, you don't think about close proximity, you're just ready to get up and do your job. Right. So, um, and two, we have these small rooms. So the last firehouse we had, we were in one big open room. Okay. So you heard all the snoring and all the sleep talking and all that, but right. now we have a little bit more privacy. Um, and as you can see on this side of the building, we each have a window per bunk. Okay. Um, and we have, you know, a little shelving you can come on in if you want. This is my bunk actually. Um, we have shelving underneath so we can store, you know, A, B, and C shift, we can all possibly share a bunk. So your bedding could go under here, and then each shift you just pull it out, put your stuff on, um, you know, shelving, and then even a night light, so to speak, a reading light. So if you wanna not bother people with these big lights on, you can turn that off. Um, they gave us really nice shades, so you can kind of pick your level of Yeah, it of gets privacy. dark in there real good, too. Yeah. So you get your good night's sleep as you needed, you know, and stuff like that. You know, you normally work A, B, and C shifts. So those are 12s and 24s and 48 hour shifts, right? Uh, typically a 24. Okay. Uh, our part timers can work a 12. Um, if they are, if we do get overtime, you can work up to a 48. Okay. So it just depends on what you sign up for. Now, when the tones go off, does everybody hear the tones? And do that, you know, is it immediate or do they, Yeah. how do they work? So this house is really nice. Some of the other houses have a loud bell and it kind of gets you zero to 60. Right. Um, here for just the engine, if it's just us, the lights and tones just go off in here. Okay. And a red light comes on gradually. Okay. And then the tones go off gradually. It's not a zero to 60. Right. So it doesn't jolt you into that fighter flight as bad. Okay. That's really nice. Yeah. And that goes a lot into that firefighter safety, for yeah. firefighter health, you know, you know, getting up that quick takes right. a toll over time. It does. So yeah. 
So the fact that, again, you know, a company looks into this and you as a chief, you say, yeah, that's something that we're definitely going to need in this kind of building. That's having that foresight to say, you know, Dana, you're working here. I want you to be here for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. And when you're done, I want you to be healthy. Right. Exactly. So, and that's built into the building. So exactly. Very yeah. cool to see. Yeah. So our ambulance quarters are, are separate okay. in case the, the medic only gets a run. So they're not alerted. They're alerted separately than, than the engine crew. Okay. So okay. that makes it nice too, that sometimes it's not always right. the engine going out. It's right. just the medics. So. Yeah. All right. Let's go back out the store and uh, see what we got. So uh, you see right here we have a laundry room. It's just for personal laundry. You know, we like to think of the firehouse as having a clean and dirty side. Uh, that way it keeps the carcinogens away from us as we go about our day to day. So this is more for, you know, our bedding and personal laundry, anything that may come up, towels that we clean with on this side of the bay. Okay. Um, so just simple. Um, it's where you keep our cleaning supplies as well. So kind of like at home. Yeah. Have that here. Yeah. Got to take care of your stuff. Exactly. So, and this is the EMS bunk. The I EMS can... bunk. So kind of same rules apply if they get a run the lights and tones go off for them and it's just for them a lot of times we go out together but again they're separated if needed be okay quiet room. is that where you go when you get punished <laughs> this is a timeout room yeah. <laughs> no actually it's just a cute little it's just a little place to get away and just kind of cut everything off if you just need to decompress for a minute Meaning, you know, if you want to come in here and watch a movie or, you know, we like to talk, we like to have family time, but sometimes you just need to get away from that. You can come in here and just have your own time. And we have a CAD system computer. It's not up and showing right now. So if for some reason you had a movie playing and you couldn't hear the tones, you will see them up there quicker than okay. it'll come out. Okay. I like the fact that it's the darker walls too. It kind of keeps that ambiance down a little bit. You're not, yeah. you know, but you got the logos. Got the got, logos. All yeah, right. Got our nice. So lines. I heard you change your logo from one station to the next. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, we can give you a shot of that. Our old uh, logo used to say "Pride of the South Side." Okay. Which I feel like we're still "Pride of the South Side," but our captain um, did a really good job in making up a new logo. It's superior dominance. First, do no harm. That's it. Yeah. So you're going to see the new logo on the side of the engine. Okay. And I can show you a shot. Um, again, we've taken a lot of pieces out of the old 93s and put them around here to right. remind us. So. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's a new house, you still want to bring some of that weight. Oh, in. for so. sure. Chief, is this your office? No, this is the uh, the station officer's office. Okay. So we have uh, with this station, there's a captain and two lieutenants. Okay. One, and they're on each, uh, each shift, A, B, and C shift. So this is where they... Uh, they do their paperwork and computer work and counsel anybody that might need counsel. That's got it. <laughs> Make your chart list for the day. This is now the second airlock. There's one down there and one up here. What's an airlock in a firehouse? So again, it goes back to keeping us healthy on the clean side of the department, right? Or the clean side of the house. So it's just one more way to keep air from coming in. It can filter it out. It can just keep one more layer between, you know, the kitchen okay. and the living room. So it's really trying to abide by those NFPA regulations of having hot, warm, and cold zones uh, to make sure, again, that you stay healthy. Um, the fact that you've built this already into a firehouse, you know, you can have this firehouse last another 50 to 100 years. Exactly. Yep. Room to expand. Let's go yep. see the apparatus bay. As I walk out into the apparatus bay, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe. Hit that notification if you like what you're seeing. We appreciate it. We're trying to get to that 50,000 mark. So just to help us out and get that done. We're now in the apparatus bay here, but before we talk about the engines and what's in here, you got a pretty cool feature over here. You have your own indoor training center. We do. So we have a three-story tower that uh, has lots of functions. So one, it's obviously great for training. We can, and exercise. So right. I'm out here at least once a week. Uh, we just run stairs. We can pack up, pull line, do all those kind of things. Um, this kind of gets you in that gear of going up. Um, also, too, we have a hose drying uh, okay. uh, uh, capabilities up here. So what we'll do, I'll pull this down, I'll show you, is you just drag whatever hose you need to carry over the top, you hook it in. Hook your couplet in there. You know, make a little knot, pull it over top, and just let it dry. So it kind of gets it up out of the way, gets air flowing, kind of keeps one more thing out of your feet. Right, and it maintains your hose so they last a whole lot longer. You know, you don't always want to pack up a, a wet hose or anything like that. You got to make sure that it's dry. Yep. You got a nice drain system in the floor. So we do. Yep. For the hoses that are draining there. And so this is another kind of energy efficient type uh, amenity for the house. We don't have a hose dryer. A lot of houses have hose dryers. 
use a lot of electricity. Right. Uh, we chose to go the old-fashioned natural way here right. and just do it with natural ventilation. Right, but you got plenty of space in between this and you got something to train with. Right. So very cool to see. So now you mentioned earlier that you guys currently have uh, an engine here. What kind of engine is this? And tell us just a little bit about this engine. This is our Pierce Velocity engine. She is a 2016 engine, holds 500 gallons. In our district, we are pretty hydrated, so we don't really need um, you know, tankers or anything like that. We can usually pull off a hydrant. Right. We have 200 foot cross lays and a blitz line off the back with a two and a half. Okay. With all these developments, do you have uh, problems getting in and out of the developments? Or are you able to make the turns? And are they longer driveways? Because 200 is a pretty long hose to pull off a cross leg. We don't have a whole lot of long setbacks in our district. We have a lot of housing divisions. So yeah, we do have it, but um, the 200 foot will get us pretty much anywhere and then some in a home, so we never have to worry about extending our line. Okay. Um, we do have some more stuff in downtown. We do have the Greenwood Mall. Um, different things like that, apartment buildings. So we are set up if we need to go a little bit further. Right, right. The one thing I noticed about this is you have your new logo on it. We do. And it's a good looking truck. You know, we don't see too many white with the red striping. We usually see traditional red or they've been doing blues and greens and yep. yellows. I really like the white. How hard is it to clean? It's not too hard. I mean, you definitely see some stuff, but we give her a wash about every day that we're here. And it's just, she just spiffs right up. And uh, Tom, Jean, and Barney were our original horses that pulled our original pumper back in. And they were white horses. Okay. So this is kind of a, a remembrance of them, so to speak. An homage. Right? Homage, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So there's a lot of history and tradition in our color scheme. Okay, okay. Now I noticed that you don't have a plume event in here. Right. You have something different. Yeah, so they went a different way. They have air hawk system or the air hawk system. So okay. it's triggered by a few different things. Uh, pressurization changes. So when you open the door um, and the doors themselves, they, Chief, you can correct me, um, they can turn them on themselves when right. they go up. Right, it's a metal strip that activates them as they, as they come up or they go down. Okay. And so they continually scrub the air. They do it for an extended period of time. So instead of catching the exhaust right off the engine, it'll just scrub the air and kind of monitor. And we have monitors in here as well that monitor the air. Right, and with a 2016 engine, this one has the death fluid anyway. So it it's decreased a lot of those that we worried about, you know, 15, 15 years ago. Exactly, yep. Getting cleaner all the time. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right, next to us is the, the basically contracted ambulance service yes. uh, and they go all over the place but these guys are here 24 7 for you they are uh -huh. okay and it's a medic unit not just a bls unit it's a medic unit yep okay. so we have three ambulances uh, two 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 and a half two and a half we call them okay. three so yes yeah, so the reason that we say that is one only runs from nine in the morning till nine in the evening um but you know, as things change, that could change. But right now, that's what they do. So it's a power truck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the other two, they're they're with us 24-7. Okay. So you have one here and you have one at another station and they kind of cover the township? 92s has the other full-time yep. medic. And, and then, then 94s has the part-time Yeah. Okay. So all the outlying stations have ambulances at them. The central station doesn't. Okay. Okay. Currently. On this side of the building, you have some pretty unique things too. Yeah, so again, this comes into the clean and dirty side of the firehouse and keeping the carcinogens out of our living space and reducing our time in them as much as possible. So I'll start with the gear and laundry room. And this is where we clean all of our gear and get ourselves all cleaned oh, up. Oh, wow, this is huge. So you got your own extractor uh, so you can clean your own gear. You don't have to send that out. Exactly. Save a little bit of money on that. Exactly. And then we can sit, dry them out here. We have fans and we have drains, whatever we need to do to get all those cleaned up. And then this is new to us is we have a decon bathroom. Okay. So if we need to come in and take a shower and not take all of that over in the living side, say you know, have a particularly bloody run or something, um, heaven forbid, but it happens. Right. Uh, Everything's motion censored. Everything is motion censored. Yeah. And then we have a shower, bathroom, everything you would need. Okay, okay. And then putting the motion sensors on a lot of these lights also helps save with money, right, Chief? Right. Absolutely, try to make it uh, as efficient as we possibly can. Uh, it's actually uh, cooled and heated uh, via a geothermal system. Okay. So that, uh, that helps out as well. Right, I think this is the first geothermal station we've been to then. Really? Yeah, yeah. So that's up and coming. It's something East Coast doesn't talk about too much. Uh, we still use traditional air exchangers and stuff like that, but you know, geothermal is a good way we to had, do it. We had the area for the geothermal field. Okay. And so 
that's why we decided that uh, may be an option for us. Yeah, yeah. And it's definitely gonna save you over time, that's for sure. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got. All right, so if you go off to the right, we have our gear storage room and another Walk airlock. Walk in real quick here. Get the light to go on somewhere. There it goes. <laughs> so back here is a storage room, it looks like. It's our hallway to nowhere. Okay. We have two hallways to nowhere. Let me nowhere. step out of the way here. You have two hallways to nowhere. Right. What does that mean? Why well, do you why, do that? Why would you do that, yeah. right? So this is an intentional build for an expansion. Okay. So we can easily build another bay or two on the other side of here. And all we have to do is re remove that block area to be directly into that bay. So you now have an airlock system on this side versus that side for whatever you need to be. You know, that's a really forward thinking. Many times we get firehouses that and EMS services that build the immediate needs. This is what I want, this is what I need right now. And they're not thinking five, 10 years down the line. Right. You only have one engine here currently, but you have the, with the development, you could have an, a truck company, you can have another engine, right. maybe a tanker or whatever you guys right. need. You've already built that into a building and right. not have to worry about it. Correct. Very simple. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and All then right. down here is just a uh, gear storage, right? Gear storage, and we will point out that it has a positive pressure system built into it. So you kind of hear that fan already going. Okay. And what that does is when the exhaust turns on right outside with this ambulance, it could shove that under the door, get more on our gear. So we're right. trying to avoid that. So right now it just keeps all that out and keeps our gear as clean as it can be. Okay, okay. And these lockers uh, are nice and uh, pretty. They look brand yeah. new. Well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, these were our old lockers from Old Station 93. Okay. And then a company, Chief would know more than me. Maze Powder Coating. Okay. Uh, we want to give a shout out to Mays uh, Powder Coating out of Whiteland, Indiana. Um, said that they could uh, refurb these uh, lockers for us and they took them and uh, they did a fantastic job right in the middle of COVID uh, and and basically they donated their time and materials to us for these lockers. That's awesome. So they, they look brand yeah. new. You wouldn't tell that they're more than a year old. So uh, and they're big. You know they hold everything you need. Yep. So um, now I noticed it's cool over here. It was kind of warmer in the engine bay and it was cool where we walked in. Why is that? So the, the actual engine bay is not conditioned. Okay. So you, both sides of the building are, are conditioned air, whether that be heat or cool. Um, the engine engine bay is not. Okay. Uh, we do have heaters in it for the winter time, but for the summertime, uh, it's all ambient air. And, and usually when we keep both the both the north and the south doors open, we get quite a, quite a good flow of air through there. Okay, okay. And with those doors open, you're inviting the public you you know they like to see that you guys are here you're protecting them and doing the job so that's pretty cool and one other thing don't tell don't let anybody tell you that you can't build a firehouse during a pandemic because we did it <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure it was very challenging to do that well, we did it so and we were delayed only a couple months okay. really in the grand scheme of things yeah we've been finding that not some of the newer ones that are trying to be built now are delayed right. because of the construction materials right. and stuff like that so so it was a little bit of a challenge. Right, right. You have well, one more, two more rooms down the side here. Let's go take a look at those. At then... least one more, yep. All right. And this one, I love the sign. Station Cribs. Crib, yeah, <laughs> there you go. All right, so this is where we keep all the toys. For... Okay, so this is like your engineer's room. <laughs> This is yeah. just our maintenance room. So anything that we need to maintain the grounds, because we do all that ourselves, uh, I mean, for the most part. So we mow the grass, we um, try to maintain the plants as best we can. So we have everything here that we could do that. And you'll see some random stuff stored in here. So um, like for instance, um, our hazmat uh, pads and booms are up there, random little things. Uh, Workbench to work on stuff for here. Sometimes guys will make props for training, you know, whatever we need to do. Right. And this is just a little garage door off the back. Yep. It goes right out the back. So we can and take the but again, lawnmower it, right out the back. It's thinking ahead of the game saying, you know, we need a space for our lawnmowers. We need a space to maintain our stuff. All too often we see, you know, little outbuildings or little sheds that were kind of add ons. Right. You guys thought of it right away and say, you know what, let's put that in our house. Let's make sure we, we're taking care of everything. Yeah. Good and this job. is the upgrade. We used to have a little barn at the old 93s. <laughs> yeah. But uh, during the winter, it's heated. So we have a heater out here. So if we need to come work on stuff or just maintain the equipment, right. um, 
you know, we have this great space to do that. So here in the Midwest, you guys get snow. Oh yeah. So who does the plowing? Do you guys also plow too? The snow blower's right there. You got a little snow blower. <laughs> okay. And there's shovels we, back there. We, we, do the, uh, we do the plowing as well. So we have, um, we have a support services division. Okay. Uh, so there's, there's a couple people in it. Uh, and then anybody else that wants to plow snow, right. uh, we'll, we'll take the help. So, all right. So it, uh, we, we get all of our stations to help out the city because they're concentrating on the streets. Okay, let's go back out into the apparatus bay and coming back out into the apparatus bay, I noticed these doors up here. What are these about? Well, let's go take a look. All right. That's our mechanical area. So uh, we'll, t we'll take a look what's up there. The doors are there. We also have a tow motor or forklift. If we need to take heavy items up there, okay. uh, we get it from the city and we can use it to take heavy items up there. But those doors weren't on the original plans of the firehouse. Okay. Uh, they were put in specifically for a large air handling unit that they couldn't fit through this stairway. Ah, okay. Or on that landing. Or over the landing, right. 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 So, you know, making adjustments when you're building a building is gonna be also that's something one of the that things, you need to be ready for. Right, and and that's one of the there things, that, that's one of the items that, if you have a good architectural firm, they're ready to go on the fly. Right. So they can adapt and overcome when we have these issues. Right. When big things like this come. Yeah. And you can't get it up the stairs. Okay. So. You got your great big air right. handler. And right. it looks like you have tankless water heaters. So we have tankless water heaters as well, hopefully, uh, to help us with the efficiency uh, as, as far as that goes for, for heating water and, and taking warm showers, okay. hot showers. Okay. And the very back there, you'll see the pumps for the geothermal. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely something that, you know, is important for newer firehouses to have and, and, to, and to think, you know, what is sustainable? You know, is it more geothermal that's going to be a good thing? Is it air handlers? Is it tankless water heaters? And there are other things out there, there are air purifiers and right. now UV lights to kill right. the coronavirus. And this, has, and this has a UV unit in it. Yeah. To kill, yeah. You know, the, all those kind of things are go back to you, Dana, and keep you healthy so you can keep working. Obviously, Chief is here too, but you know, you guys are the grunt of the system. You know, you you guys are doing the work day in, day out, all the time. So I appreciate your service. Thank you for inviting us out. Thank you for taking us all around and, and showing us your pretty house. So yeah, thank nice you much. To meet you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you. Once again, this is Heroes Next Door. This was the Station Cribs in Greenwood, Indiana. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification, so we can keep bringing you more. We want to hit that 50K mark in just a couple months.